Hi again, folks, for another video on Microsoft Azure Sentinel, we will work with another analytical rule which is available. And this is very important because these type of rule, when you dig into that, you're not only covering your SOC skills, but also at the same time, it will help you become a software, a software, not a security engineer, um, a senior level engineer, where um, you want to understand what these analytical rules are, how it's going to help. Because as a SOC analyst, you will just watch, but again, as a security engineer, you will have to set it up and send the alert and monitoring. So you're going to be a security engineer where you will manage seam in this case microsoft sentinel but you will be imagining a similar seam so it's very important and and in some scenario if you want to become a customer facing role as a consultant as a security engineer you should be able to speak to all these stuff uh, when it comes to uh, security monitoring uh, not necessary for microsoft azure sentinel but pretty much uh, every tool today in the market they offer more or less the same thing so it's very important and that's the best way to learn in microsoft sentinel because once you have the azure um, uh, tenant setup, you should be able to look into those so and be able to write about this, be able to uh, talk about this in your interview. You can say, how did you protect your environment? And you can talk about, you know, you found some um, MFA disabled user by running those uh, queries. So this is very important. So today I'm going to talk about some audit activity or legacy attempt. But let's talk about legacy or the attempt. And it's, it's very important for you to understand what is the legacy auth attempt you just write it in your resume or even if you're playing around as a sock analyst today while watching my video um, without knowing what it is it's not going to help so basically legacy authentication is not modern authentication so what is legacy and modern modern authentication uh, is basically where you can implement enforce and apply multi-factor uh, and this is how the identities are set up but legacy authentication are uh, the one where modern auth is not uh, applicable like OAuth and all those protocol, um, you know, uh, where the identity works with different systems. So if you go back, let's say if you had a SQL server in your environment from SQL 2003, for example, uh, modern auth and MFA, you cannot enforce in Microsoft environment. And this where, where it will just use a username and password. That's a legacy, legacy auth. For example, if you're an old mail server, like Linux mail server, SendMail, uh, or Microsoft Exchange 2003, for example, or maybe 2007, chances are if there is one old server or traditional Linux server available, that might not be able to use modern authentication or MFA or multi-factor. This is where the legacy auth means a username and password is required to set up and configure. That's the old way of doing it. And there are so many companies, large organizations, they do have old system. And this is where the legacy authentication attempt happens. And this is very easy to do the identity breach. This is very common and attackers are always looking for systems which has that weakness. I would not say vulnerability is by design in the past. So, but again, if you have 50 SQL servers and happens to be SQL server, two of them from 2003, guess what? Your account can be compromised if somebody can penetrate from those servers. That's why you wanna make sure if you understand your environment, if you find out in your environment, are there any servers or not uh, either you go and manually test it or you can run this script um, which basically create a rule it will go and scan in your environment and then it will find out how it's going to find out it will look into the sign in logs basically this is visual which when somebody is logging into azure with the sign in log it should be able to pull the data so you can run it every day and you can go back days 30 days, how far are you going to go back, right? And then you create the rule and incident setting how you wanted to do it. And if there are multiple, then you can group them together and automated response if you want to create it uh, or you don't want to create a response basically, then you leave it and then you can set the action as assign owner, assign tag or add a task, for example. So I can add a task to somebody and put the, put a description and send it to my sock so sock something like that and then um assign the owner so and once i assign the owner i can select the name or a distribution list or distribution group and it can so once the scanning is done for the last one day or 30 days if that's particular triggers and find out somebody try to log in with a legacy auth you will be notified with the email address and then you will start troubleshooting it. So once you notified that 
there also has to be configured by a security engineer because SOC analyst, you will just see that alert. And from there, once you see that alert, you have to escalate it to the security engineer. So the work which you're doing here is for a security engineer who's performing this thing and making ready for your SOC analyst. So again, if you're SOC analyst, you're learning it, that's the best way for you to become a security engineer. And then write it in your resume, learn it and play around with that. There's a lot to do it. That's the best way to start um, uh, learning. All these, just don't look at it, what it is, how it gets reported, what goes un underneath, how all these work in the back end. So there are so many of them, right? And I'll try to cover more and more, give you a good enough idea. So at least uh, uh, you can even not learn it also, apply this thing in your job and help you move forward in your career all the way to an architect level. I hope that helps. Stay tuned for another video. Thank you.